Meet Dr. Jameis Lim, an associate professor of economics at Essex Business School in Singapore. In this episode, we unravel his journey from building models to building his country. So what's your backstory and what was life like growing up in Singapore? Well, to be quite honest, like most Asian kids, especially sons, my mother expected me to grow up to be a lawyer or doctor, an right. actual doctor rather than a PhD. Doctor. Yeah. Having hopes of entering either law or medicine, Dr. Lim pursued his education likewise. However, everything changed when he entered the military. In Singapore, you, you go through two and a half years of military service. And when I was in the military, I started taking courses in economics. And it got me really interested in the kind of the subject matter. And I, I realized that that was ultimately my deeper calling. I really loved it. And I was, really interested in it and because of that interest in it I was able to excel as a result of it so it, it was a very natural evolution uh, it was a bit scary in the sense that I was deviating from that route that uh, my family had expected for me but I think nevertheless the decision to pursue something that was uh, very personal and meaningful to me was ultimately what saw me through it and allowed me to uh, find some success there. So what were your parents like? Were they supportive of this? What was it like when you said that I want to do economics and I don't want to do, say, medicine or law? Um, well, you know, my, my dad was always someone that supported uh, me pursuing my dreams. And his view was always, as long as I excelled in whatever I did, uh, that was the most important thing, to do the best I could in whatever I chose. So he, he gave me a lot of support in, in that transition. My mother, I think she eventually came around. She realized that it was something that I very much wanted to do. She reconciled it within herself that she would never be able to go for free doctor visits for the rest of her life. Uh, but yeah, that's, yeah, I think in the end, parents everywhere, they just wanted the best for their child. And, yeah. you know, as long as I was happy, in the end, they were able to be happy for me as well. Sure, sure. So I've known you from the time you were the lead economist at one of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the UAE. And uh, you've worked with the likes of World Bank and JP Morgan. Now, switching over from being an economist to being a politician now, how has that changed your perspective on life? In some ways, I don't think your perspective on life changes. I think you carry the sum total of your experiences, right, with every job that you take on. So uh, when I was at the World Bank, I learned elements about uh, working with developing countries, but also with the poor. And that was something that I carried with me, even when I was in the large sovereign wealth fund, where the goal uh, really wasn't about poverty alleviation. Dr. Lim believes that his learnings are crucial in tackling tough circumstances. And likewise, you know, my experience with that sovereign wealth fund helped me to think about what it meant to allocate capital uh, right. in terms of what it meant for a country to have ready access to capital in its development process. And I guess all this brings me to what I do uh, mostly today. I am a representative in, in the Singapore Parliament, but I'm also at the same time a professor in the business school and I teach my students the importance of bringing as rich a slate of experiences as you can to the table, right? Because ultimately, these are the things that you can contribute to a given job that could be different from what someone else uh, contributes. For instance, if they've been a banker all their lives, they wouldn't have as rich a set of experiences as if that individual had come from uh, industry in technology or even if your summer job was uh, something like uh, working in, in a low-wage uh, job, you gain a certain empathy for what it means to be a low-wage worker and how that may matter for policy making at the national level. Yeah, very well said. So, you know, you're such an inspiration for people around, especially the overqualified people like yourself. I'm sure they are taking a lot of inspiration from you. Do you think that with your entry into politics, more and more technocrats would want to become more uh, a part of politics? Do you think this will be the new normal going forward? Well, to be fair, uh, in Singapore, there are many people who are technically qualified that have to into politics. So Singapore, in, in that sense, has always placed a certain value to having 
train individuals uh, represents uh, us in Parliament. So, so I think that's an important qualifier to start off. With historic transitions of economists to the political realm, Dr. Lim is not alone in his journey. He even emphasizes on its importance. It's like in any job, what you want is you want a certain depth of experience and skill set, right? right? So you, you want to emphasize the development of that skill set. For me, it is economics. For someone else, it, it could be some other area. It could be in public health, for instance, you know, which of course in recent times has become extremely important for the formulation of public policy. It could be in um, urban design and urban planning. That's your area, architecture. That is, of course, important for certain elements of national policy making as well. Uh, it could be in education. So whatever it may be, if you gain a deep and specialized knowledge of that subject, I think you have something that you can bring to the table and to contribute. So, so I would certainly encourage anyone that uh, deems themselves a little bit overqualified and, and has a passion for serving in public service, that this is absolutely legitimate outlet for handling the energy that goes beyond, you know, yet another publication in an obscure academic journal that you know, right. 50 people are going to read. Right. Oh, that's really interesting. So you have such a well-rounded personality and you're also so open-minded. You, you want to explore, you're curious. Now, have you had any mentors in your life, in your career? And how do you think having a mentor helped you and shape your career? I think it's critically important and, and it's one of the things that we sometimes don't acknowledge enough because of course at the end of the day when you see someone uh, go through their careers, you only see the end product. You don't see all the factors that contributed to that, right? Right, uh, right from the start, I mean even when I was deciding after my master's whether I should pursue a PhD or not and I had essentially two choices. I could choose to pursue one in economics or because I was very interested in political science as well, I thought well, maybe I could go that route of getting PhD in political science. And it was uh, my mentor and boss at the time who strongly advised me to go the route of economics. The words were that economics tends to be more quantitative, it tends to be a little closer to a harder social science. Due to the technical nature of economics, Dr. Lim developed a skill set that could be used across various disciplines. And I definitely found it to be useful. You know, I can approach problems which are of more technical nature. I don't really get scared off by equations and yeah. data, uh, and they come handy in analyzing problems that may not be directly related to my area of expertise, but at least I'm not scared off when trying to confront the data and the analysis in that sense. So I would say mentors at every stage of your life can both alter the trajectory of how your career proceeds, uh, but also at the same time help to continue to build off. I've transitioned into several different jobs in my life and at each stage um, a mentor was important to helping me learn the ropes of that slightly different career. Great. So how did you find these mentors? Is there like a magic formula? I think it helps to realize that you should look out for them and you know I think it, it works differently for different people. Some people they actively approach these mentors and ask them to be mentors. While working with the World Bank, Dr. Lim himself was assigned a mentor. However, he strongly believes that you shouldn't wait for something like that to happen. The trick is to obviously be open, to look out for who might be an available mentor and to understand that there are people who are very much interested yeah. in passing on what they know. For people who are technically skilled, it in fact is sometimes both an honor and a pleasure to be able to impart that knowledge to others. So the trick is to be able to channel that, to be bold, approaching them, asking them to be a, a mentor, and at the same time, really absorbing whatever they share with you with an open mind. Okay, interesting. So, um, Jameis, now, you know, you've got so many things right. I'm sure there were times in your past when things did not go the way you wanted them to go, or now looking back, you feel you've made, you've made mistakes. So if you were to relive your life once more, what would you do differently? So I'll be quite honest here, and it's not that I haven't made mistakes, but I think my mindset is often not so much to want to go backward. Now, I'll share you a story here that came from what happened after my high school. So after my high school exams, I didn't do that amazingly. I did all right, I got into university, but it wasn't the standards that up till then I had managed to 
achieve. And I had a conversation with my dad at the time. I had wanted to retake the exams, and he told me, "Well, you could retake it, and you know, if you put in the effort, maybe you would very much do better than you did the first time." But I think he understood intimately the idea of an opportunity cost. And he said, "Why do you look backwards? Why don't you?" Look forward instead, and and it's true, right? Because if I had looked backwards and I thought, okay, I can redo this, I would have given up the opportunity to pursue something else with my time, right? And so, at the time, what I pursued was I decided to take courses in、uh, computer studies, and that ended up becoming an advanced diploma, and that in turn was the basis for me to then decide, well, maybe with that, I have enough of a taste of what it's like to be involved in computer science and so on, and in Technical disciplines, maybe I'll try my hand at economics. So I think for me, I've learned the value of just looking forward. Although the past is critical for identifying mistakes, Dr. Lim does not downplay the value of experiences. I wouldn't dwell and say I would want to relive this. I'll, instead, I'll say, okay, the next time I face this, sometime in the future,、uh, I will approach it in a slightly different way, given the lessons I've learned. I mean, very well said. So essentially, you're saying that. You take success and failures as you know equals, and when you fail, you don't really look at it as failure. You perhaps just tell yourself that I've learned something new. Yeah, and if anything, I almost find sometimes you learn more from failure than you do from success. Success feels good, I guess. You get the warm glow,、um, which you don't get when when you do not succeed. But at the same time, you run the risk of being less reflective. And I think I like to learn. I like to learn not just. Knowledge that you can read up on, but also、uh, from experiences. In that sense, my encounters with failure,、uh, I think, have been as formative, if not more formative, of who I am today. Absolutely. So failures are indeed the best teachers, right? Oh yeah, I, I wouldn't say I recommend it to anyone, but、uh, I would definitely say if it comes your way,、uh, don't downplay its importance. And just keep plugging away because it's not un- unusual in academia to receive rejections for articles that you write and submit to journals.、Uh, you just need to grow a certain thick skin to go through your usual mourning period after、uh, a given failure. For me, I give it 24 hours and then I say, "Okay, I'm going to pick myself up from here and move on. What were the lessons? How do I incorporate that? And let's move on from there."